Okay, we're going to uh, graph the cosine function. And I've got my unit circle here. And what do we know? If we, if we take an angle, a ray here going from the origin to a point on the unit circle, and we look at the angle, then the cosine of that angle will be the x value on the unit circle. And it's very easy to read uh, multiples of 90, 0, uh, pi over 2, or 90, uh, 180, or pi. 3 pi over 2 or 270 because those are easy points to find. We're going to use those to help us graph the cosine. The cosine is very similar to the sine in that, first of all, we can put it in any angle we want. You can keep going around and around or in a positive direction or a negative direction. And our domain for theta is negative infinity all the way to infinity, just like with the sine. Also notice, since it's the x value of the... Um, uh, ordered pair here, that the x axis, the x values only vary from negative 1 to 1, that is on the unit circle here. So our range is going to give us only values from, just like with the sine, only values from negative 1 to 1, and including 1 and negative 1. So it's got the same domain and range as the sine function. In fact, we're going to see that it looks like a lot like the sine function just moved over. And we get the points on this here. I've got the cosine theta axis, and this is the theta axis. I take theta at 0 here, and of course cosine of 0 is 1, isn't it? So I'm going to put a 1 here. And then it's going to, it's going to go down, isn't it? The x value is going down as, as the point moves up the circle. It gets, the x value gets smaller and smaller until it hits 0. So at pi over 2, or 90 degrees, it's 0. And when I go from here all the way around to pi, uh, it becomes negative 1. So I go down, by the way, this is negative 1 and this is 1. I go down to negative 1 here. And then as I move uh, from pi to 3 pi over 2, right here, 3 pi over 2, uh, the cosine becomes 0 again. And as I move from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi, it becomes 1, like this. And so it has sort of a wave that looks like this, and this is called the fundamental wave here, this shape right here. And notice that as soon as it hits pi, it begins all over again. It starts all over again. So it continues going on and on like this. And the period is 2 pi, just like the sine. The period of the sine is 2 pi, and the period of the cosine is 2, sine, two pi. And that from any point on the cosine graph, 2 pi units away, it just starts all over again. Now if I go negative 2 pi, or excuse me, negative pi over 2, I go down this way, down here, and I see the cosine is 0, so it goes down to 0. And as I go from negative pi over 2 to negative pi, it goes down to negative 1, down here. Okay, and that's at negative pi, so we've gone around to negative pi, and as we go to negative 3 pi over 2, here's negative 3 pi over 2, it goes to 0. Remember, cosine is the uh, x value, and as we go around down to here, it goes to 1. So um, it goes like this. And I hope I explained, um, hold on, but yeah, okay, it goes up to 1. I don't think I got 1 on there, did I? 1 right here, dot right there. <laughs> All right, I might have put it over here. No, that's just a dot on the board. So it's, and notice it's reflected directly across the vertical axis. That means it's an even function. That is, cosine of negative x equals cosine of x. And it's a very important fact. And also notice that it goes on forever. And remember where I got the points, it's the x value of each point on the unit circle is the cosine of the particular angle. And that's a graph of the cosine uh, function. Now, it doesn't hurt to change the names of the variables. I'm going to change this to y. I'm going to change this to x. And these y's and x's have nothing to do with these y's and x's. But now we can say this is y equals the cosine of x, and that's what we graphed.